So you will now hear from uh, Dr. Derek Van der Koy. Derek is a professor in the Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology and also in the Department of Medical Genetics at the University of Toronto. He's a member of the Board of Directors at the International Society for Stem Cell Research, and he's also, he also sits on the editorial board of many prestigious uh, scientific publications. Uh, Derek is, was the first to discover the presence of stem cells in the adult human eye, which has raised a lot of promise. Uh, and he's now working to try to create transplant, uh, for, to, to transplant these cells into the eye to restore vision. He's also part of the uh, Project Management Committee for the Ontario Consortium for Regenerative Inducing Therapeutics, which is a network of scientific, uh, scientists that is working to try to turn stem cells discovery into actual medical treatment. So, Derek. Uh, thanks very much for that introduction. <laughs> The, uh, I, 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 well, the first thing I'd like to do is just on behalf of all the researchers who have been funded over the last years by the Foundation Fight, Fighting Blindness, I want to thank all of you uh, for your generous donations. Uh, your donations have made the advances that we and others have made, uh, close, taken those advances closer and closest, closer to clinical treatments. And I want to tell you about uh, uh, one of the, uh, I think, more promising uh, advances that's been made uh, in uh, treatment for retinal diseases in the last, over the last 10 years. And I'm a stem cell biologist, so I'm going to tell you about stem cells. Uh, if, if we're going to replace the photoreceptors and the retinal pigment epithelial cells that are, that are, are have died in uh, some of us who no longer have normal vision, then we're going to talk about stem cell biology, because stem cell biology is the way to replace the cells that are missing. So I have to tell you a little bit about what stem cells are and uh, also about where you get stem cells from. So stem cells have two defining features. One is they self-renew themselves. They make copies of themselves. They're cells that divide and make copies of themselves throughout our entire lifetimes. The second feature of stem cells is that a stem cell in one tissue will make all the different types of cells in that tissue. So a stem cell in the eye will make all the different types of cells present in the eye. So what kind of stem cells are there? Well, there are stem cells in the blood, there's stem cells in the brain, there's stem cells in the eye. And I'll tell you a little bit about the stem cells that are present in the retina of the eye. Now this is a, a, a story that started with uh, uh, research not in mammals like uh, uh, humans, but started in fish and uh, frogs. And it turns out that in fish and frogs, if you, if you look at one of your goldfish that's in one of your kids' aquarium, you'll see as goldfish, as adult goldfish get bigger, their eyes get bigger. And the reason why their eyes get bigger as adults is because they have stem cells in the edge of the eyes that add new cells throughout life. So in mammals, uh, rodents, uh, monkeys, and humans, there's no new proliferation of cells. No new cells are added in the adults. So the cells you get seem to be the cells that you're, you, you have. The problem was, why is there such a difference between fish and frogs and humans? Why are there stem cells that persist in the eyes of frogs and fish, but not in humans? And so we and others said, well, maybe the stem cells are still there. But what happens in mammals, like humans, is after the stem cells make the retina in the embryo, they go quiet. They go quiescent, and they don't proliferate anymore. They're still there, but they don't proliferate. And so it turns out that's true. The stem cells are present in our eyes, and they're inhibited by factors that are present in the eye that prevent them from proliferating. And so I think one of the long-term goals, maybe 20 or 50 years from now, is we'll be able to use those endogenous stem cells and release them from inhibition with drugs and allow them to remake the retina from the inside, endogenously. So this is, this is 20 or 50 years in the future. But the shorter term, and I think research funded by the Foundation Fighting Blindness is bringing the shorter term promise to reality, is that we're going to do transplants. We're going to transplant the progeny of retinal stem cells that are making the rod and cone phone receptors, that are making the retinal pigment epithelial cells into people who are missing those cells and hopefully give some vision back to them. 
So I, I apologize in advance for the people who have, who have done this before, but the nice thing about stem cells in the eye is they're the only stem cell you can actually see without dissecting the body. So if you'll turn, those of you who have good vision, anyway, if you'll turn to the person next, sitting next door to you and look deeply into their eyes. Now I have to tell you, so you're welcome to use this in bars later tonight <laughs> or, or around the tables. This is a wonderful way to make a new friend. But if you, you know, you have to look at their eyes if you can. So if you look into their eyes. <laughs> okay, not yet. Hold on. There's no kissing. This is just... So if you look into the eyes, you'll see a little colored circle. It's either green or brown or blue, depending on what you are. This is called the iris. Everybody see the little colored circle? Anybody not see it? Those of you who have sight, right? Okay, so now the hard part is if you look back into the eyes of the person next door and you see a thin black line just outside of the circle, just outside of the green or blue or brown circle. See if you can see that thin black line. Anybody see it? Yeah? So it turns out that one in 500 of those cells, those little black cells in the eye, are retinal stem cells. Uh, we get them from people who donate their eyes to the eye bank, Canadian eye bank, after they die. As long as we get the eye within 24 hours of death, we can get about 10,000 stem cells from each adult human eye. And the same number from a child who dies at six, year, six days old or a person who's 80 years old. The stem cells are there constantly. They make the eye in, in embryonic development, but then after we're born, their proliferation is suppressed. But if you take them out of the eye and separate them from their neighbors, those single stem cells will make millions of cells each in a dish. They proliferate like crazy. In fact, they're the easiest cells we've ever grown in a dish. They don't require any special things. You essentially put them in water, take them away from their normal environment, their normal inhibitory environment, and they start to proliferate like crazy. So, the neat thing is now we've got stem cells that can make lots of, uh, lots of cells, but the trick is trying to get them to become the types of cells that are missing in the eyes of those of us who are blind. So we're looking for trying to make the retinal stem cells proliferate to make cells that will become either rod or cone photoreceptors, the cells that receive light, and are the rod photoreceptors of the cells that are damaged in many people with RP, or to make the retinal pigment epithelial cells at the back of the eye that are the cells that are damaged in many people who have macular degeneration. Those are two of the cell types that many of us are trying to convince the retinal stem cells to make. And we're getting really good at convincing them to make them. We're good at getting them to make rod photoreceptors now. And we're getting better with the collaboration of uh, Gilbert Bernier in, in, uh, in Montreal at making, getting them to make cone photoreceptors. Many people are getting good at making them, making the retinal stem cells turn into retinal pigment epithelial cells. And so we're getting closer. We can take some of those cells that come from stem cells, transplant them into the eyes of mice, so we're putting human photoreceptors that came from a retinal stem cell, and putting them into the eyes of mice that are blind because their own photoreceptors don't work. And what you can do is you can give a little bit of back vision back to a blind mouse by putting a human photoreceptor in the place of the mouse's photoreceptor. This is promising, but there are very small improvements in vision so far. The first clinical trial of taking uh, stem cell derived uh, cells and transplanting them into humans has started and this is by a company in the United States, and they're treating, uh, among other diseases, they're trying to, pre to treat macular degeneration. So they've taken stem cells, they haven't used the adult stem cells, they've used embryonic stem cells, but they've taken these stem cells, turned them into retinal pigment epithelial cells, and are starting to transplant them into patients who have macular degeneration and Stargardt's disease, and asking whether they can take the place of the cells that are missing in those people who are blind. And the question will be, this is new research, whether they'll actually show improvements. Now, there's a number of problems that have to be solved yet. The first one turns out to be a really simple problem. The eye is a wonderful place to transplant cells because it, you can actually see what you're doing. 
you look in the eye, it's sort of ironic, but you look in the eye and you can actually see where you're putting the cells. It's also a very nicely organized structure. So you can actually thread the cells exactly where they have to be surgically to transplant the cells that are going to repair vision. The problem, the first problem is that when you try and transplant them in, the cells all clump up and stick together. They don't spread across the surface of the retina like they should in order to integrate into the retina and restore sight. And so a number of people are trying to devise better ways of delivering the cells. And Molly Shoykat at the University of Toronto has, has uh, developed a wonderful new uh, biomaterial to deliver the cells. And it's a neat thing. It's a, it's a, a hydrogel that at room temperature is uh, uh, a liquid, but at body temperature, warmer body temperature, is a gel. And so what, what's been found is if you put cells in this hydrogel and inject them into the eye, because they're in a gel, it spreads evenly across the surface of the retina. And so this has solved what I think is the first problem, how to distribute the cells nice and evenly across the surface of the retina. The next problem is how to get them to integrate into the host retina. So we're taking retinal stem cell derived cells, transplanting them into the eyes of mice right now, but eventually people, and we want to get them to integrate correctly into the retina so they can not only sense light, but transmit that information to the next cell in the retina and then to the brain. Right now, when people transplant cells in, one or two percent of the cells that are transplanted actually integrate correctly. So there's going to be a number of things, problems that have to be solved by basic research to try and get more of those cells to integrate. Because we're going to, we're going to need a significant number of new cells to actually reverse the loss of vision that's present in, in, in many of you who have a, a, a loss of sight uh, and in people around the world. I want to just say that, that the uh, Foundation Fighting Blindness uh, in Canada has supported some of the uh, most interesting research uh, on stem cell biology that's going on in the world. There are lots of other places that are doing it, but the Foundation Fighting Blindness has supported this research. And I want to encourage you to continue to support the Foundation because, as I said, the first clinical trial using transplanted stem cells has started. It's not the best trial. There's going to be, have to be some improvements made, but over the shorter term, I'd say over the next decade, we're going to start curing uh, uh, blindness. I'd like to suggest that, the, that blindness is going to, the, going to be the next disease that's cured by stem cell biology. Right now, stem cells can treat uh, uh, patients who have had uh, leukemia and have chemotherapy to get rid of their uh, leukemia cancer. You can transplant blood stem cells and rescue those patients. The other clinical use for stem cells so far are skin stem cells in burn patients, people who have chronic burn. You can take skin stem cells from other parts of their body, grow up sheets of skin in the lab, and throw them on over the burn place, and they replace the burned tissue. The next disease, it's a prediction, it doesn't have to be true, the next disease I think that's cured with stem cell biology is going to be blindness. So I want to say again, thank you to all of you for your donations, and I hope the future does bring that. Thanks.